had a chance to pick up a little, we bring the throttle back to the setting for cruising and trim the plane for straight and level flight. Next, let's find out about the glide. To enter a glide, we bring the throttle all the way back and ease the nose down. To about this attitude. Trimming the plane for the glide as soon as we have the nose where we want it. In the correct or most efficient gliding attitude, the plane will descend at approximately this angle. Suppose, for example, that we were attempting to glide into a field here from this point. Under normal wind conditions, let us say the correct gliding angle would put us comfortably within the limits of the field. But if we were to shallow out the glide, bringing the nose up, let us say to about here, we would reduce our forward speed, cutting down the lift, and we would come down at this angle. Instead of stretching the glide, bringing the nose up would shorten it. Chances are we'd undershoot the field, coming down about here. If, on the other hand, we were to steepen the glide, dropping the nose below the correct gliding attitude, we would descend at this angle, and at the same time, we would also build up excess speed. We would again run the risk of undershooting. So the correct gliding attitude is that attitude in which the plane will glide the furthest. So you see how important it is to get acquainted with the correct gliding angle. Notice the position of the nose below the horizon and the top wing, which is down much closer to the horizon. That's about the way the glide looks. Here's how it sounds. If the nose wanders up out of the gliding attitude, the sound quiets down. This looks wrong for the glide and sounds wrong. So bring the nose back down again to the correct attitude. gets down too low for the gliding attitude, you get a higher pitched hum in the rigging. Thus, you will soon begin to get the feel of the glide. But at this point, there are a couple of other things we need to know about the behavior of the airplane. Let's do some experimenting. First, seeing to it that our plane is trimmed up for straight and level flight. Some planes, as we have pointed out previously, can also be flown straight and level at cruising speed with feet off the rudder pedals. Such planes we speak of as being well rigged. Now let us once more simultaneously add throttle and ease the nose up smoothly into the climbing attitude. in the plane for the climb until it will remain in that attitude, hands off. But now if we take our feet off the rudder pedals, the nose swings off, or yaws, to the left. This tendency of the plane to pull off, or yaw, to the left under certain conditions is sometimes referred to as the effect of torque. If we put the plane back into straight and level flight at cruising throttle, the tendency of the plane to yaw to the left, again, disappears. This is because the manufacturer has so rigged the plane that it more or less counteracts the yawing tendency when in straight and level flight at cruising speed. But if we cut the throttle and push over into a glide, there may even be a tendency for the nose to yaw slightly to the right due to overcorrection of the rigging built in by the manufacturer, although this will probably be very slight. But no two planes are exactly alike in this respect. Even though they may have come off the production line side by side, there are a hundred little variations which may cause minor differences in the rigging. But if every plane is different, how do you know how much rudder to use? You use whatever rudder is required to keep the nose from swinging off the course you want to fly. Pick a couple of points on the horizon and keep the plane right on that heading, being careful to keep your wings level. If the nose starts to pull over to the left, ease on a little right rudder pressure, just enough to bring the plane back on heading and keep it there. If it swings off to the right, you overcorrect. So ease off a little of that right rudder pressure, just enough to allow the plane to come back to the exact heading you want. But don't stare at the nose. Don't put on the blinders. Glance at the ground from time to time so you'll always know where you are. Keep the eyes busy. 
use that roving gaze. Strangely enough, it's easier to keep the nose right on heading if you don't concentrate on it too hard. And whatever you do, keep your wings level, except when you're in a turn. If you fly with one wing low, you're doing one of two things. You're either turning, your nose is pulling away from your heading, or you're slipping. You're not in balanced flight, so always be conscious of the attitude of your wings. Now, the next fundamental maneuver in the syllabus is the gliding turn. Starting from the gliding attitude, you simultaneously apply aileron and rudder. Then, once the turn is started, hold the degree of bank you've established using opposite aileron if necessary, and relax whatever rudder pressure you added to start the turn. When you're ready to recover, apply opposite aileron and rudder in such a way that the nose stops moving at the same instant the wings reach the level attitude. Let's try another one. Perhaps the most difficult turn to get on to is the left climbing turn. In a straight climb, we've seen that you usually have to carry a good deal of right rudder to keep the nose on heading. So, in entering a left climbing turn, ease off a little on your right rudder. If your rudder adjustment is correct, you'll get a smooth, well-balanced turn entry. If your nose moves too fast for the amount of bank you have on, you've probably eased off too much on your right rudder. If the nose stops or doesn't move fast enough, chances are you haven't eased off enough. But you'll be able to tell when you hit it just right by the smooth precision with which the plane enters the turn. Then when the turn is established, ease that right rudder forward again, replacing what you took off to start the turn. And hold your rate of turn, keeping that nose moving steadily and the same distance above the horizon throughout the turn. When you're ready to come out of the turn, you'll have to add even more right rudder than you've been carrying. In entering a right climbing turn, you begin with whatever right rudder you've been carrying in a straight climb, adding to this as much more right rudder as you need to start the turn. As soon as the turn is established, ease off that added right rudder at the same time you neutralize the ailerons. In recovering from the turn, instead of adding left rudder, simply ease off a little more on the right rudder. If you have trouble, experiment gently with your rudder pedals until the turn looks right and feels right. <laughs>